Eric from Madhouse, Toronto. Chris from Vangelist.ca. PR from YouTube. Look who they let in the room. <laughs> Bobby Skullface. Take for life. Uh, A3U review. And we're here doing a round table again. Yes. You thought we wouldn't, but we are. What are we looking at? Uh, something really cool. 3A Megatron. 3A Megatron. Dark of the Moon. 3A Dark of the Moon Megatron is, uh, he's out now. Yeah. Where's his little, uh, head, head garment? That it's was... a Bamboland exclusive. Oh. So even though we do have it on hand. Oh, okay. It's not like something you can get. Uh, it's got a wire in it. If you do get this on the second hand market, it's all bendy. And you can put this on his head, wrap it. Make him feel all nice and protected against the elements. <laughs> have any of you guys messed with any of these uh, I have movie not. toys? I have not. I messed with them a little bit in the dealer room. You should take a look at this then, because I've messed with the Optimus. Yeah, He's... we checked that out in the last reviews. Yeah! It's amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, same, so same, that one was a Babylon, uh, sorry, was a Babylon? Um, Bamboland. yeah, the, Bamboland. the Optimus had a Bamboland gun. Yeah. This one has a Bamboland scarf. Uh, the main thing to point out about these is the size and the feel of the joints. Um, these are high-end exclusives along the lines of like a Hot Toys piece or something that's, you know, going to be 400 some dollars. The thing about this that I feel is worth bringing up that you don't get through photos is that I found the Optimus, at least, felt playable ready. Um, it didn't have the feel of a high-end collectible where I feel like posing it is this gift I'm being given for a small period of time before yep. the toy tells me to stop. I think one of the coolest things about the 3A stuff that I've seen is just the overall like high detail of the paint and finish, you know, the wear, the rust effects and everything like that. Obviously you're probably not gonna see from you know where you guys are viewing from your home, but it's quite amazing the, the variation in the text, uh, textures. It's Iron nice Man to note they've got the nice rubber road. tires as well right here. This mm -hmm. is a Awesome little detail as well. Do the rubber tires yeah. move? I'm just curious. They, they absolutely on, do. On Optimus, they literally every do. single piece that looked separate was on a ball joint or a swivel or something, so it could get out of the way of like very particular articulated postures. Yeah. Um, just a lot of moving parts is my experience with Optimus. Yeah, that's right. So this is no different. It's got the table to rotate. Um, I don't see oh. it on the ball joints here. Oh, they even have some bring loaded mechanisms like this. Yeah. The main question I have for you guys who haven't messed with a 3 thing before is like, do you feel confident moving the joints on that thing? I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> Very confident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it this, feels good. This pipe flex just reaches right in. <laughs> the materials feel good. It feels good. It, I wish it wasn't movie stuff, but you know, I can't have the world. <laughs> we well, got plenty of non-movie uh, Megatrons coming up shortly. That's a fact. That's a fact. This is the Megatron review. Oh, there we go, yeah. This is good. There you go. There's a light up feature on the uh, the eyes. The problem is uh, we don't actually know where the button is yet. So uh, we're, we're going to dig it out. We've got uh, Ben Pia on the case. Uh -oh. I feel like the joints are built pretty well on the couple I've handled. Uh, there's layered paint cool. applications. It's like the, the money value is there. It's really a question of whether or not you want the aesthetic. Uh, and obviously, like, you know, if you aren't into the movie designs, there's only so much one can do, mm -hmm. right? It's Agreed. Not, not like I can tell you, well, you know, this, this design you're not into has a real chain on it. <laughs> Correct. Right? Have you changed your mind? <laughs> no, mm, no. Well, get out. No, you <laughs> can't say that to a customer. And um, truthfully, the value is actually there because it's actually uh, typical for uh, like this size of a figure to reach around that. And in fact, uh, you'll, you'll get some Hot Toys figures that are about the same sizing that are much more. Um, and don't and lack the kind of detail and the weathering effects that you'll see here. On these kind of life life statues, you don't want it to be very obvious where the joints are. Definitely. Where you know you see the joint, you're like, okay, I have to move it here. The the fact that you can get still these dynamic poses without these kind of obvious joints and, and, and pieces, um, like you said, it's kind of intuitive how, how you can articulate this guy. And and I think most people might come into your house say, oh, is that a statue? And you're like, no, and you move it around, and that's kind of the surprise factor. There. What do you think I am, a Prime One collector? <laughs> <laughs> There's a sense of play to this, where it's like, you look at this design, you look at the crazy hand, and it's like, you know what? Every hinge is a hinge, at least. <laughs> this is a series of four figures. There's an Optimus, a Megatron, a Bumblebee, and soon, as of this recording, a Starscream. Uh, that's it for Dark of the Moon. They're moving on to uh, the other films after this. Yeah, didn't they just announce the, the Last night? Last night and uh, Age of Extinction. Oh, great. Um, so if you're into those so robots... So ratchet. That's right, just in pieces. <laughs> I want the, a ratchet! That's the build-a-figure. Everyone comes with a piece of ratchet. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not a, gen, a huge fan of a lot of the bay designs, but I still like that first Prime design. I thought that his robot mode I thought looked really cool, and I love I love the statue of it. Yeah, not I mean, the statue that. The, yeah. And yeah, I mean, the in, one, in the the one they had him display, the big three A one. He looks, all, he, he was all standing there, he's like, <laughs> huge, and he's like, ah, I don't, I don't look cool. Yo, guess what? We got a surprise for you. Uh, in this very facility, we have assistants who can provide to us a look at something that's not even out yet, that you might not even have seen properly yet. It might even just manifest on the table in front of us. Isn't that incredible? Whoa. What is it? I haven't looked Where down yet. I'm too afraid. From? Oh, it's Megatron. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> the gray prototype of 3A's G1 Megatron. It's the, uh, the newest version of the license. This is a super prototype, so we can't screw around with the joints too much. But, like, you guys should get a look at the aesthetics here, at least. This guy's got uh, a mace, a sword. Yeah, and the, 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 the flail looks really cool. Nice. There's uh, some interesting things about this guy I learned, namely uh, going off of something that I really like about the Transformers things in general. Despite having all the, the kooky hands with the moving fingers, they all have a palm slot tab for their gun at this yep. scale. Uh, Megatron, I believe his sword has a flip floppable tab. So you can pop it into either hand. Nice. Um, and the, the aesthetics of this Megatron and mostly the downward slope not just the bell-bottom pants, but the entire downward <laughs> slope of his whole silhouette, similar to the Optimus, I found was quite a callback to your classic Ronin Warrior approach, which is an interesting way to put a personal twist on a G1 design. Uh, it gives it a different retro feel, uh, something maybe suitable to the scale if that's your thing. Yeah, and I, I like their take on the G1. They, they don't do a hardcore cartoon or even toy. No, it's accurate. mature. Yeah, it's, it's very different. It's very stylized. Uh, some of the proportions are very different than what you might see, and so that may turn you off, but I actually like it. The helmet is really different. Um, so again, you, you may want the, kind of the old school bucket head, but I think the, the, the face sculpt is really sharp on this. It looks good. It looks mature. I like oh, it. Oh, we're seeing some lights on this side. Hey, look, yeah. there's lights. Who did that? <laughs> it yeah. must have been. The it's the giving hand. <laughs> um, Chris, uh, or Vangelis, I'm sorry, Vangelis, <laughs> does his Randy. barrel on, on the back actually move? It looks like it articulates. Does the barrel on the back actually move? If, if, uh, oh, who yeah, said it that? Does. It's the giving voice. Ignore that. Oh, it does move. It's on a double jointed hinge. So it comes oh. over the shoulder? Yeah, he can, um, can raise it up. he can take out some flyers with some single barreled flak, uh, being the military expert at the table. So I want to let you know that's some jargon for shooting down airplanes. It's around 400, give or take, dollars. That looks um, good. The G1 Prime retails at 390. But the, what does the G1 Prime retail for? Uh, I think 390. Okay. okay. I've heard 390. I think that That's the, what I was to the problem with figures of this scale becomes the playability of them, where they do mm -hmm. become a bit awkward to muck about with. You know, where they just become display pieces, right? Yeah. And if they're just going to be a display piece, well, then why not get a statue? You know, like, because there's nice statues out there. And I'm not, I'm not downing these. I'm just speaking philosophically about oh, no, collecting. It, that, that's that's why I'm really happy about the joints on these. Because something this scale, my biggest worry when it looks like this, it's that price, is like, is it just a bunch of ball socket joints? And are they borderline going to ask me to find a pose and glue everything? Really? Right? Like, is, is it going to just be a really rickety thing in a rubber bodysuit, like, you know, uh, hmm. Hot Toys Batman? Maybe I have a bias. I don't know. Even though these guys can't transform, I think that's where things like the shoulder cannon and the other um, aspects, other you know features, have to they have to play in that space, and they can experiment a bit more because you haven't seen that shoulder cannon thing, which seems kind of obvious. Um, so if if they do a little bit more of that, I'm I'm open to that because it kind of reimagines what you thought the original intent of the figure or character was. Uh, mm -hmm. and, I, and I actually like that because, again, it goes with the change and characterization of the styling as well. Um, I, I, I actually kind of applaud them for taking that chance and doing something because somebody's going to be like, well, that's not G1. Well, yeah, but this is not a hardcore G1 um, piece either. I do think you have to be careful with certain iconic things, though. Like, I think that there are certain, like, uh, especially for, like, really beloved uh, Transformers characters, there's certain things that make that character that character like Optimus ears windshield like uh, and I think that Megatron I think that the the helmet is one of those things that you you can't you can't veer too far off I'm not saying that this has mm -hmm. I'm just saying for if they do more stuff in the future like you can't take away Batman's ears 
right? Because you, that's, that's an iconic thing. you can make longer or shorter. Exactly. That about does it for the 3A stuff that we've got on hand. Uh, we're going to move on to some transforming pieces, I believe. Uh, just some bits and stuff here and there. Maybe not even transformers. We'll see. Yo, we're back. It's Bold Forms time with Bold Forms Triple Changing Leader of Evil. Uh, he's got three modes, robot, tank, and pistol. This project popped up some years ago. Some mm -hmm. being like two or three. And uh, went a little quiet for a while. It is coming back up with some uh, PR storm, that being a lot of Facebook posts and etc. And uh, we have copies of each mode in uh, various states of test shot, I believe, as well. The robot mode and uh, tank mode are a little bit uh, too rickety to handle right now, but the gun mode is a lot closer to completion and we can pick it up, squeeze it, which is actually what I did the first time I picked it up, to see if anything would move, and it didn't, so that is good. Um, the other thing that I should mention right away, there are plates missing from the top of the tank so is that you can see uh, what's going on in there if you're at the show. And the gun has some clear panels in place of silver panels, because that is a feature on this piece. There are some swappable armor plates if you want to see what's going on inside, or you just like clear. So, um, I guess to, I just want to kickstart the conversation, what do you guys think of the, the concept of this piece? I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I like the concept. I, I like the Gun, although it does, as we were talking a minute ago, it's very realistic. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but I, yeah. I was gonna say the scale is actually really good. Yeah, the, the, I mean, scales, get an I will say the scale is really nice, and they found yeah. a way to solve the problem of that grip where he's got proportional legs in robot mode, but then in gun mode, you're not it's not like some of the other ones that are out right now where you're having to like stretch your hand out to get your hand around the grip or going, yeah, this for way. The like it's, early it's, Asian it's, hands, that just feels really nice work. in the hand. I picked this up. And I was kind of shocked how good it felt in my hand. I'm not sure if it's that I'm so American, <laughs> or, or that I, I grew up so close to Baltimore, but it felt really good when I picked this up. It felt like a gun. It's that, it felt um, like home. You know, it's not the G1 design, but a, a buddy of mine is a, a big gun guy, and he told me, and I messed it up earlier just now, but he told me it's the P99, nice. which is the evolution of the P38. So it actually does have some relevant history to it. So I can't speak on this, but this feels like I, you look at my. I, I just kept my. I just subconsciously <laughs> took my finger out of the. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like good habits. <laughs> like like it's yeah. it's uh it 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 does feel very accurate to the real thing. <laughs> We don't have all the parts on this right now. There should be a scope, which I think is part of the cannons that we yeah, see up there. Yeah, part of the, the cannons on there, and then there's and then, the little sight that goes yeah, on there. Yeah, this is yeah. like the laser laser attachment, basically, the laser yeah. sight. So there's a lot of different parts. Like this, this oh, sorry. These parts come off. I thought he's um, the one who does that. Yeah. See? I didn't they, break it. It just slides off. It's, I'm it's, being so careful. It, it's a feature. It's a feature. But <laughs> I'm not a big gun guy, but like I think one of the biggest things for me uh, when I pick up toys like this is that... It's solid, like things are tabbed in and nothing's moving. Uh, you know, history with MP5 and some other versions of, of Megatron, even when you get them in their final modes, it doesn't it doesn't feel nearly as solid as this. Like you can squeeze and try to move this stuff and this thing is pretty solid. Uh, the other thing I was told and uh, we got to experience before is that this is the all-in-one transformation for the stock and, and um, the yeah, stock piece here. So it's not, awesome. yeah, so this, not actually parts forms forming. parts of the legs, I think. Yeah, it fills mm -hmm. in the legs, which is how they get thicker, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I really appreciated that, and that was a conscious decision based on feedback, because, you know, a lot of us don't like parts forming. Um, but I think that's a really cool and innovative design. Definitely. And I think that carries on to the, the other modes, like the robot mode, right? It's not just taking uh, a G1 take at it. It's paying homage to that, but evolving it they don't want it to be that you know 20 year old figure they want you to realize be able to look at that and say instantly oh that's megatron we even had a couple people walking through this hallway that aren't transformers fans immediately point that yeah. out and say that's megatron you know and and i think well, and that's exactly is, what it's they not want. exactly dead on but like both the gun mode and the robot mode are very evocative of ej Sue's design in those first infiltration and devastation series which i really loved i loved his lines, and I love that design for Megatron, and that's very close to how it looked in the, in the comics, so that, that's really cool. Well, also, on a, on, a, on a design that takes some liberties, to me, when you get ambitious with your engineering, that's when liberties become 
uh, part of the game, right? Like if you look at that robot moon, it's it's got it's some different stuff here and there, you know, slightly like different shoulder, sort of a plated look. It's also like this this dude turns into th into two different things. So you know, of course, things are going to move differently. That's actually my, my biggest um, anticipation is uh, getting to handle and see how the transformation works. Yeah. Because I I really like that I am not like you can see how bits and pieces move here and there, but there's no obvious overture of like oh obviously the gun just goes and now it's a tank. Right? <laughs> there's some uh, smart choices made. Like if if you go this route, you're automatically saying that 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 G1 is not necessarily your your plan, right? So then by doing this and doing the tank, you're able to kind of check two boxes in people's memories of how they see Megatron. So like, mm. I get it. And uh, one thing that, that was mentioned before about fan feedback, uh, I, I do want to highlight the amount of uh, feedback being responded to, or acknowledged at least, in, in regards to this piece, uh, right down to face options, um, pointing out that in order to avoid paint scratch, they're going for plastic polymers that will just look good as a base uh, visible hue. And uh, of course, like, this whole project to me feels like a response and, uh, and, and evolution from Lone Wolf, their debut piece. Um, the easiest thing I can say is I took the gun mode and I went like this and nothing moved, right? That's already, it's already saying something. There are a lot of locking tabs on this thing. It's holding solid and uh, it's making me feel confident about where this could go once it's a finished piece. Like I will always throw back to the original Mastermind release, Nightmore for Commander, mm -hmm. and then the fix, Nightmore for Annihilator. That is still one of the greatest night and day moments I've ever seen from a toy company. And whenever I see a, a company, you know, falter in some way on its opening release, I always say to myself, like, just pull an Annihilator and, like, hit that second one so hard people even forget the first one happened. Yeah. You know? right. and one, one thing I always like to point out with Triple Changers, because there, there's always got to be some compromise, and especially with Triple Changers, it's always, like, the weakest mode. Um, Where the, they just put the kibble bash together. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, for me, judging for it, I think we all think the gun mode is, like, you know, strong. Yes, mm -hmm. really strong. It seems to be the, the best, most solid. This is probably the second, and I think the tank it is a third, but I, I can't judge it right now just yeah, because it doesn't have all the armor seeing pieces. Seeing the pictures of the tank, I think it's actually a pretty decent looking yeah. tank. Right. You know, when but, you get it all armored up, we just haven't got a chance to play with that fully formed. But here's the other question. If you wanted one of the three to be the weakest, which would you choose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And how many Megatrons have tried to do just a robot and a gun and barely Failed, pulled it basically. off? Right. I just want to point out, I can't figure out where those two tank barrels are on the. the uh, so that's they're the, not the, they're, they're not, not from the scope. Not all the no, yeah. they're, from, no. they're from the scope. Yeah. I think yeah, I think that I think those are the pieces from the scope. They're, they're they're not on there right now. We're, okay. we're like a bunch of primates looking at the, the fl flaming stick. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, how does it work? I actually <laughs> like the tank mode better than the robot mode. Cause, yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. I really dig the tank because I've always liked tanks. Right? Yeah. But the fact that it's a double barrel tank. I mean, it just says, hey, I've got a lot of firepower. I don't know. I, that makes me think of that uh, one of the recent episode, uh, issues of More Than Me CI. It's like, double fusion cannons? Just look at yourself. You're like, you're ridiculous. <laughs> That's kind of what I get when I see a double cannon. So this thing is still in development. I don't, I don't think we have like a super solid launch date on this yet. But I believe the price point is 120 or 130. Wow. That's really? very decent. Uh, really good. Yeah, yeah. And, and just in terms of overall height, he does scale with the the masterpiece line, even though again it's not a hardcore G one. Yeah, like uh, I I I definitely call this a neo classics more than anything else. Like mm -hmm. you know Voyager ish, uh, you know put them with your Orions or your uh, your Primo Vitalisi. Oh yeah, that would actually look really really good. I think they said the basis of this was supposed to be uh, originally an IDW inspired Megatron. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for it. Like, yeah, it's in the sub 150, which is always a welcome sight for yeah. me. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll find out more. Um, moving on, we've got something pretty sweet because it's a robot. Uh, this is the Mastermind Creations reformatted Tyron Tronoronicles. Uh, Tyron Tronus? Ty uh, Tyron Tron Ty and Tyron Tronus. Tron and, and we're Tron having difficulty Tron with the name Tron? because it's really long, but. Anyway, uh, still change eventually. Y'all know who this is, surely. Yes. It's a IDW, more than meets the eye, inspired Megatron slash Megatronus, depending on which parts you have. And so there's there are a lot of other parts that we're not seeing right now. This guy comes with a ton of other things. Right now you're seeing him with his kind of 
space cannon, spaceship kind of nose cone. Uh, he also comes with more kind of G1 or even um, more than BCI inspired brown cannon. Um, he also has some accessories with the barrel that, again, evokes more of the G1 look. But again, there's a lot of other parts that are going to come in that you can switch, uh, swap between them. So a lot of uh, options with this guy. He's got a lightsaber too. Yeah. This guy has three modes, jet and tank. We've seen a jet in all black, I think, on Facebook. At least I have. Yeah, yeah, I saw it earlier today, yeah. Um, and uh, reformatted to me is usually, oh, I can play with this. Like, that's generally how I take reformatted. I've had enough experiences with reformatted where even at its weakest, I often have a, a confidence in the joints where I just feel like I can pop the thing open and mess around with it. You know, best case example, of course, being something like Spartan. That is just a tank of a toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like it's not as close to the more than me see I look as I would like it to be personally. I will say that that's something that I've been noticing more recently. Like stuff like the Whirl is just not quite, it's, it's not, I don't feel like Whirl is as close to Whirl as say uh, the DJD guys are, the Tarn is as close to Tarn or you know, make toy swerve is to swerve. Like, you know, and obviously it's a bigger figure and stuff, and I get it. Um, I thought that too, um, but then when I went back and looked, it was closer the, than you remember. Yeah, it's closer than I remember. And I haven't, but, I haven't gone back and refreshed my but memory. But so. I think you have a point. Like, and you and I both had that same first, you know, view of it, thinking this same seems, seems like something's wrong or off or a little bit. And even if it's not, I think the fact that many people like you and me will have that first impression may throw people off on this. Yeah, it's the same with uh, Cyclonus would be another example. Yeah. I'm just like, it's not quite as close as I would like it to be. I love MMC, I lo and like, I love this face sculpt. Like, and there's, and I, there's the way that the joints move. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm digging an awful lot about it. It's just, when I saw it, I was like, <sighs> like, it's just wasn't exact, didn't hit that It didn't hit the, the, yeah, like with Coulter. Coulter, you saw it and you were like, this is this is it. Time. I just pulled this out of the pages. I have a hard time with the names. Pig, Tarn. Tarn. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah. As soon as you saw Tarn, you're like, that's it. Yeah. You know, and I didn't get that feeling with this, but I can tell you in hand, this feels good. Hey, I have crit. <laughs> I have crit to drop. It's part of my my initial test of posability. Little crit. Uh, the uh, the design. Is his bucket is smacking into his collar. Yeah, he is hell of a lot. Right turning his head is a little difficult. That's how, that's uh, why I popped it off a second ago. But. Yeah, if, if there was some way, this might be too far along. If there was some way to have not maybe even extender or like another hinge within that. Well, neck that's to, the one thing I complain about is I think the shoulder. He's got to look I left. I think the shoulder pieces are a little too big, like in compared in comparison to the comic, they reduced yeah. that. Yeah. I think that would have given them the room to do. I that. can I can nudge his head forward a little bit, you know, like Roxbury and it can get a little bit more of a turn, and I, I'm glad you laughed. Uh, but I can hear the music now. <laughs> the other thing I was about to say, I felt like his waist was getting a little bit hindered, but there's actually a you, piece yeah, that you, didn't you push slide those, up. Yeah. Hey, guess what? His waist isn't hindered, hooray. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, He's highly posable for such a bulky figure. One last thing I want to mention about this guy. His, his squiggly livery on his chest, mm -hmm. sculpted on. Sculpted, mm -hmm. yeah, not, not, not a stupid uh, sticker like all I don't, the other ones I don't know get. if I like this, the, the molded one, because I like kind of like the clean, clean shaven chest, not like, I, no, I, like, I like yours. I get it. I like yours, but <laughs> usually I like the hey, clean shaven I'm, chest. I'm all man. Yeah. <laughs> it gets, uh, I don't know, like, like I said, no, normally I, I leave those stickers off, but like that really doesn't, I mean, that looks okay on that one. It, I, it I wouldn't like the comic it, if it would just like paint apps and then, I don't know. You can see you could wipe it off. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to sound like we're just sort of sitting here going, like, what a beautiful toy. Let's just like, get on that. <laughs> but, like, that's... It's reformatted that's for me. what we're saying. Re reformatted yeah. for me, like, is a very high-tier, unofficial Transformer robot line where, like, if I have a review piece of it, what I do is I try to find a negative immediately and start making a little list so that I can get that part out of the way and then play with the thing for, like, a day. The thing that I, I, I won't... <laughs> That this does the reformatted line hasn't done what much most lines do, do and uh, English English with, <laughs> is start with the two main guys right Optimus and then Megatron mm -hmm. they've already put out what like a, oh, yeah, a they dozen started, they started with six more than that like yeah, yeah, a like, dozen and a half figures wasn't Anubis that we had today he was like R eighteen yeah so I mean the the fact that they've it taken this long 
and that it wasn't even the most probably demanded figure for you know the first 12 and they're finally coming out now i'm you know honestly i'm really excited to see their optimus i would love to see some scavengers mmc oh yeah i need i need some grimlock action and do do me a galvatron what the team galvatron yeah it's a little <laughs> off the beat yeah I'm, I'm like where where are we going with this i have an agenda all right <laughs> Uh, we're gonna move on to some more robots from here. Um, so stay tuned because it's happening right now. We have uh, Terra. Is it Terra Aegis? A Terra Aegis. Terra Aegis. Terra Aegis. Terra Aegis. Man, they, they make Tyrant, the hardest. Tyrant, to, yeah. Tyrant to a Aegis. I swear they're Terra trying Genius. to make it hard for us. I know. Terra Genesis. <laughs> Hey, look, it's the black one and the green one. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So uh, we've already racist. looked at the black one at uh, TFCon Toronto, right? That's yes. correct. And I, I think they had uh, the preliminary um, version of Artif it's Artifacts, right? Artifacts, yeah. Yeah, um, which actually... Hey, somebody was... remembered his name. <laughs> Yay! And that was an easy one. And they actually uh, made quite a few changes since then because uh, before it was just literally uh, very close to a recolor plus a little bit of a different backing to it, right? Mm -hmm. From what I understand. So what 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 are some like what are some of the major retool changes we're looking at here between the teams? It looks like. Uh, so the the big thing I think are the arms. You can see all this, also the side panels, the side back panels, and then obviously the backpack with the wings and stuff like that in the trailer hitch. Or I don't even not, not trailer hitch. What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The toe, the toe thing, the toe thing. That's wings. the big. That's the big thing, I, and uh, as you can see, when you put him up next to this guy, he's actually slightly shorter, so they compacted, well, they have an extendable joint for his thighs that allow them to compress, so you'll have a slightly, you know, squatter figure for their voice, their artifacts. And otherwise, the transformation's generally the same. Yeah, yes, it is. It's generally the same. Uh, they just did a, a little bit of the retooling, just so that it kind of can give it some differentiation. I think a lot of times with the uh, repaint or, you know, a retooling uh, of a, something into another character, you run that risk all the time of people, you know, saying it's pretty much the same thing, right? And uh, personally, I think, unfortunately, even with the, you know, newly retooled parts and whatnot, it still isn't, you know, that much different that it might offer those that, you know, really don't want to be buying second piece with the same mold uh, mm. over again um, so for those that are concerned with that um, you know this may not this may not hit the mark necessarily uh, but I think the changes do you know bring it closer to at least uh, being a little bit different uh, being that they are the same. I'm sure <laughs> at some point like it's a business right and everybody knows that whoever gets it out first is gonna is gonna cast a pretty wide net so I'm sure the speed is paramount to everybody at the moment, but um, I think if it had a lot more paint finish on it, it would be a no-brainer for me. Uh, that would be my, my big criticism. It still seems like I want more of a presence than I feel like uh, the Trailbreaker, which I did get to put my hands on, um, does present. You know, like a, like, a, like Sphinx has that striking presence. Like you walk past it, you're just like, what is that? Like it's like, it, it, it asks you to look at it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I feel like uh, if it had that finish, it would. Stand. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think yeah. the options is what is what is going to keep people kind of on the fence with a lot of these figures and a lot of other characters coming up. I mean, these are guys are not the only guys that have you know more than five, four or five options out there. There's never been a better time to be a fan of Trailbreaker and Hoist. <laughs> That's true. All of you. How many do you think there are? Like, how many Six. diehards do you think? Six? <laughs> Six and one's for each of you, basically. <laughs> yeah. Personally designed toys, what else do you want? <laughs> one, for, one for each of you. God. Me. We're going to move on from all these robots and talk about some robots next. So, uh, good. let's uh, pop the table over to Robot Land. We're back. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. And on track. In your pants. <laughs> Machine Robo, Revenge of Kronos. 
Uh, this is the GoBots line for some, and then I got into GoBots, got into Machine Robo. Now I'm that nerd who's gonna sit here saying everyone's proper names and the etymology of each of the pieces, yes. and et cetera, et cetera. And also that they actually, there's like hidden GoBot face tooling that's been covered up with Machine Robo tooling on a whole lot of these, so I'm sorry, GoBot. I noticed fans. that only the one, yeah. Um, yeah. Also on the Blackbird Robo, the original pictures showed a blue mouth, like Snoop from GoBots, uh, a very rare female GoBot, and uh, they put a faceplate over it so it looks more like Blackbird Robo from Revenge of Chronos, where I believe Blackbird Robo had about 10 seconds of screen time, wherein he flew into a volcano and his head exploded. And then uh, he appeared again later. I'm sorry, I thought this was a review around people, not history of who gives a shit about robots. <laughs> <laughs> Just laying some of that out there for the one of you. Have you all messed with the ones that are out? Hmm? So yes. you, you've all messed with like at least one of the four of these that are out. So yeah, I, I like them yeah. generally. Okay. Like we're all yeah, I've, got, I've got all four of the first wave, yeah. And uh, Mixer and Blackbird are the next two to be released mm. uh, at some point in fourth quarter, which I keep realizing we're in. But uh, yeah, we've got we've got looks at like aside from those two coming up, like you know your Turbo, your Fight Tour Blue Jet, uh, your Spacey Shuttle Robo, your Loco Train Robo, your Battle Guy with his two missiles, who I love and I actually can't remember he either of his names. Really cool, yeah. Um, and Battle we've got. Robo. The two uh, brothers here, Robo. the Super Truck Brothers. There's one super brand new thing in here. I think and I haven't seen it before. This is one of the Transers. This is kind of like the Machine Robo version of Duocons. So this is a jet and a truck. Oh, oh. okay. Because from the front, I didn't realize he had his jet, and I was sitting yeah. there, and I was staring at these very clear jet wings on the back of it. And I'm like, which yeah. one am I looking at right here? They, they did a couple of these. Like a jet. Cool. And it's so it's so like much fun. the jet basically reams. The truck stands up as like a torso and some limbs, but the big hole in the jet just reams in right it. into it, and the head comes up. I also want to just point out. Look at the stance on this guy. Like, look at the curve down the back to mm -hmm. the legs. So, and the leg, tires look sick on that. Legs, yeah, all, all the tires. <laughs> Got like like wheel calves. The train is kind of sexy. Look how tiny that the, train the is. The train looks awesome. And it actually man. looks like a train. Like, like, like I mean, the, 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 the wheels on the legs and then the, the the train looks really good. Even yeah. from the back, that train's looking good. Yeah. Like I like these guys from the back a lot, except for him, Turbo over there. They do yeah, have a very crazy. strong action figure feel. Uh, of all of them so far that I've messed with, which I dig. I love the size. Yeah. The, the size yeah, really pleases me. Yeah. And, and I think there is a clear progression in the line uh, from the very first four uh, going into the, the rest of these here. They're definitely stepping it up. Now, I, I gotta put something to rest here because I got totally flacked for calling it Masterpiece GoBots or Masterpiece Machine Robo. Would you would you consider them the Masterpiece equivalent? No. Uh, only because I would not put these next no, to Masterpiece good. Transformers and say, aesthetically, this stuff all matches up. Um, I would say maybe these are high-end machine robo. Like, that's the way they feel to me. Yeah. yeah. I will back you, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. If you take the G1 Optimus Prime and you stand it next to the MP10, I think that that step between the two is equal to the original Leader 1 mm. to this Leader 1. So yeah. I will co-sign. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly, I think, the, the kind of tip that I was going on. Um, That's but, why you're sitting over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I feel like me and Vance is going to fight now. Um, but I thought it was going to be me and Henry, like, honestly. <laughs> I just don't know anything about anything. And I'm a man of love, so I'm not fighting anyone. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you know, I, no, I did want to ask, man, just because you know you have that breadth of knowledge, and that's that's kind I mean, of uh, what separates, you know. The only reason I say they aren't masterpiece GoBots mm -hmm. specifically is because there's no animation connotation to the Hanna Barbera, at least. Right. And and it's not really their fault because the whole animation connotation on these is messed up in the first place because mm -hmm. they're coming from a cartoon that drew them like the toys. So it's like they're doing a real good job at being like masterpiece esque machine robo toys. But if you're someone who remembers the GoBots and say you look at that Leader One, you're like, well, that doesn't look like Leader One to me. It's like I can't tell you he doesn't because he doesn't have Leader One's face at all, um, aside from the toy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we have no idea what the release date on any of these except for these two. Yeah, those are coming in. Uh, I think uh, very shortly they're they're about to ship. Uh, from what oh, I've been here. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So. Uh, super exciting for me and Vangelis, obviously. Um, and, no, I've been uh, collecting yeah. them. I like them. Yeah, definitely. Like, does anyone, like, you're passing one of these. If you want to look at the weird Duocon guy. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. consider them masterpieces. I think they're more upgrade because you're just slightly better. Well, these, uh, okay. these guys, see guys see look, how that works. These guys look masterpiece-ish. Yeah, these the guys larger might ones, be, yeah, but this, I'm just, just talking about complexity. In general, the smaller ones. The smaller ones just look like they're upgrades from the 
to go by. Like See, because I feel like, and I feel like, even if you look to say the same same comparison, I, I, I saw it. right? If you look at the G1 Prime mm -hmm. next to the Leader One, the G1, for lack of a better term, Leader One, and then you look at the Masterpiece Prime next to the, like, there's still that same equal distance mm -hmm. between exactly. the two. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I understand feel. obviously where you're coming yeah. from. Where it's like it's obviously not a masterpiece on that level. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yes, I agree. But I think that there is there is something to be said about them staying as close relatively, you know, to, to, right. to both. Like this, this and, I, and I had the fortune of actually doing that direct comparison. That's, this, that's yeah. right by, <laughs> yeah. that's the comment that I got because we were doing that specific, taking this old vintage machine robo and actually comparing it to the new. I really hope that, like, I don't want these to, to degrade in quality, so I'm not gonna yeah. tell them, rush it. But damn if I wish that maybe it was like one a month rather than two to four. Right, because they got a lot quarter. to cover, man. It's yeah. going to take a long time if they're going I mean, at this This pace. is a very intimidating looking thing. Like it's yeah. cool. It has a, it has like a, uh, like an attitude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Uh, character has character to it. Yeah. And the level absolutely. of detail for, you know, two relatively small figures is, is really high. Mm -hmm. I so I can it. appreciate it even, even just from a kind of transformation uh, engineering standpoint, even if I don't have any identification with the, the base material. If I recall correctly, like at least this guy and maybe one other one, the, these little dual transfer guys, if I got that name right, the road vehicle is kind of like a transport for the air vehicle. It's like you can put oh, the jet oh, in the so back cool. of the okay. truck. Oh man, if they have that functionality, that'd be really cool. And I mean, just in general, I think the implications, like we, we all know that third party company has jumped into an official license. I would love to see more third parties jump into these official licenses. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, come up with some great toys, even if it's not transformer related. It would really feed, you know, our our geek needs. You know, I, but, <laughs> I, like I, when you say that, that sounds like a good idea to me initially. Yeah. But then I wonder about any, like right now, one of the beauties of third party is that freedom. You know, and sometimes when you give that freedom up, you don't know what you could be potentially asking for definitely you know, you know what I mean it definitely opens up implications the other way yep. I'm hoping maybe that it might solve some of those saturation issues that we we're talking yeah, yeah, about yeah 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 to live on in something that's uh, more licensed and then maybe then you have this kind of spread over I don't know not just don't not just one line but many li many series many lines yeah the, the upside though of this line is mm -hmm. like whoever <clears> jumped in here and as much as you can make educated guesses, no one put their name on it. Like they put yeah. designer names in, which I love on the yeah. packaging, because yeah. uh, it lets me it lets me easily identify why I like the tank guy so much more than the other three. Yeah. But I think you know I, if, if I, they want to back like it that out because I like seeing a couple of designers that I know. When no, I'm like, oh yeah, oh God, designs. But it also allows me to discover new designers. You know, like, the, 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 like oh, so like. Now that I've played with two figures from this guy, if I see his name on future packaging and, and I really enjoyed him, I'm like, oh, I know this one. Or I felt mm -hmm. one was like, this one wasn't great. I'll, I'll know even ahead of time. Like, eh, maybe if I'm feeling iffy on that one, maybe I don't want to get it. Cause it's like, yeah. You can definitely see that the passion shifted. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I believe we're out of robots. Uh, we are, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, there's that's the great thing about these robots. There's always more to come. Yeah. That's right. So uh, I guess going like thanks for, for thanks for joining us, our special American guest. I don't know why I'm treating Henry like he's not, but uh, <laughs> uh, to, to, to Ben Hello. and Bobby, thanks for for jumping in. No problem. Uh, thanks, thanks for having for us. Having me. Thanks to uh, all of you for joining us. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Anyway, Alex, transition to something. All right. I'll, who hasn't done it yet? Bobby, you haven't done it yet. Man. Throw no. it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>